Hey, Carol here. A uh, warm welcome to my craft room. Well, I opened up the cupboard doors on the end of my island to get some fun supplies out. Uh, my alcohol inks and all kinds of goodness. We're going to color with our polychromo. And, excuse me, these are my new polychromo pencils there. <laughs> These are the Hampton Art Sets. I chose the, the Rose Triple Stamp on the left and I didn't use any of those other ones. <laughs> Do you know I do that all the time? Yeah, I have a plan and then the plan changes. Now these circle, circle removable masks I got at Michael's, they were I think $29.99 and I got them for $8.99 then I used my 20% off coupon and what's fabulous about these masks, look at the size of those things. Um, they're flat. They don't, they're not raised up so that you don't get a good stamp when you're stamping down. And I like that. And it was just one of those things where you go into Michael's, you can use your 20% coupon on your um, sale items. And that was reasonable, $8.99 with 20% off. And here I'm using the light to dark because it's a triple stamp. So when you triple stamp the one that has nothing on it, just your blank stamp there, you want to take, in my case here, the oxide inks. And I'll put the colors up because this tutorial is a novel and <laughs> I didn't write down all of the, I think it's antique linen if I'm, you know, going in that direction. And then the second stage stamping, I'm going on top with the beautiful kind of orange coppery color here. And I'll go over all of them. And you are going to see we are going to switch up uh, these roses in all kinds of ways. They are not going to stay in the orange yellow color mode here. This card took me in all directions. I'm telling you, I just could not make up my mind what I wanted to do. So I thought, okay, now after I'm done triple stamping, now that's so fast, isn't it? I decided to take my blocks, acrylic blocks, and color. So all you have to do, whatever colors you want to use as your palette, just stamp it down onto your acrylic blocks. I'm just grabbing, uh, you know, about six of them, I think. And then you have a beautiful palette of color with the oxide inks. And, um, and then you can set them aside, right, which is really nice. Or you can grab a stamp and stamp right on them. So as I was collecting the colors that I wanted to use, there's my wonderful freshwater rinse well. I will leave a link to that on my blog. It's inexpensive and it always has fresh water in the well. You just press the button and look, 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 the water goes down into that great big round well. And I also grabbed my collapsible bowl. So I had two of them. I didn't want to dirty up just the one. Grabbed my uh, distress markers because I wanted to have quick access to some color. In, in this case, the dark vintage photo on the sides and you're not going to believe oh yeah and your coca-cola quick run to the fridge and get that <laughs> you're going to need it you'll, you'll be parched while you're watching this long tutorial but it was 10 hours of footage that I brought down to about an hour and a half so like I always say you can just fast forward it and move on if, if you don't have the time to view here I'm just going over the dark marks that I've already stamped on there and actually making some different marks in the rows. Although it looks beautiful to do triple stamping, the um, I just had to bring out the petals just a little bit more to my satisfaction in the sense that I want to do a lot of techniques on each of the roses so that you can pick one out that you like and when you create your card, I hope it will inspire you to use some of these techniques. And this technique, the first one, is using your oxide inks as paint. And it's wonderful. And you already have it separated by the triple stamp to be able to color on the different petals, which is marvelous.
I just had to put that in there. <laughs> a little bit of intermission. Now you can go grab your sandwich. There you go, see? I'm coloring it here with my number eight uh, velvet brush. And then you just rub it against those little ridges and it cleans your brush. And then you press that button and there you go. Gluck, gluck, gluck. Down it goes and fresh water comes in. Wow, you can't get any better than that, eh? So here we go. We're going to keep coloring. I'm going to keep yakking. And right here, see how I added that beautiful coral color down there? You could leave it just like that. But what I wanted to do is stamp it again just over top so you could get some of the features back in of the petals. Now, if you did just that right there and you had background colored cardstock to add to this, it would be fantastic. But you know, if you watch my tutorials, I don't like white cardstock showing very often. Um, I don't know what it does to my eyes, but I just have to fill in. <laughs> it's begging me to fill in the white space for some reason. But you could keep it just like that. And I don't know what on earth I was thinking with those masks. I think I was thinking of putting a bouquet in the top one, you know, just as a stamp. And then the bottom was going to be a little hello or a little um, sentiment. But it would be on white cardstock. And that was just, you know, as I was watching myself create this just now, I'm thinking, okay, I don't think panic came in right yet. I kind of liked these colors, the peach, the yellow, the brown. And when you mix them together, you have to be so careful because it will turn to more of a mud color, as you can see in that left bottom rose. But I will remedy that in just a little bit. Now, I want, yeah, aren't they beautiful roses? I just had to throw that in there. Now, this is oxide level one. Now, what is that you say, Carol? And if you hear trees being cut down in the background here, the saws going, I apologize outside my window, but way back in the bush uh, on the other side of our property, they're cutting trees down and I can actually hear it in my craft room, which is crazy. So anyway, I'm going to start with my leaves here in the lime green. Ah, you say, yes, the lime green. It gives me a base. And like I said, if you color over it in any manner, you're going to have it as the more so the background right it's not going to be this you know in your face so don't worry what color you put the first coat like the actual number one of the three triple stamp and so here i'm just kind of i don't know cleaning up because i just want to talk to you that this card <laughs> gave me a few little problems in this sense, it was large. Yeah, I couldn't cut it off like two cards like I wanted. Yeah, I'm grow quick. It's going towards the water. Well, oh, give me a drink. <laughs> I love editing. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm having fun. And the whole idea for this card was to use my polychromo set that I just received for Christmas. And I wanted to practice on these roses. But then I got to coloring and I thought, you know what? I am going to see if I can do other techniques that would, you know, be an encouragement to people that are watching it that not only can you stamp a triple stamp and, you know, leave it at that because it looks beautiful. And uh, roses are beautiful in this color, that beautiful coral color. Oh, just gorgeous. But I thought, you know what? I am going to try different amount of techniques on this card to challenge myself to be able to uh, not get um, I don't know not get uh, what do you call it where you're stumped when it comes to what you're going to do further on in your card so I'm taking out the polychromos right here and aren't they gorgeous they're just gorgeous and I had my flower book up there if you see this kind of ringed book and I'm matching up that's what I did I was holding them up to the colors that I had but don't let that stop you 
if you stamp out a card like I did with the flowers and you don't like the colors that you chose right then, um, switch it up. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how I did that. I'm going to zoom right in. Now see how I lost the color right there in this rose? So what I did, I took out a book that I had of different flowers and I was going to use that and draw it. And then I thought, no, that would be too, uh, it was just too big. And so if you have a book and the image is large, you're going to want to scale it down when you're looking at it. And then it just throws you off when you're trying to copy like from looking at an image. You want the image fairly close to what you are doing. So I thought, okay, I'm not even going to uh, look at that. I'm going to just draw petals. And petals aren't hard on a rose. You really need to just make the letter C in the middle and then come in and off that C just make little lines as you see here and actual tiny little petals. You have the stamp to guide you right because we did do there's some roses right there boy if I could have stopped that it would have been nice so I'm just showing you I sped it up here so you could just see it isn't hard once you have the triple stamp whatever you're doing if it's a carnation if it's a daisy whatever it is you have the base there it is very close up see how I did that C and you just make it a thick C and I'm coming in with the polychromos. Yes, I'm going to have to take a break here and just have a little drink of my Coca-Cola. Now, on this uh, color base, you can see I'm totally coming off the scale of color for what I stamped down. But, you know, if you just left that plane, if you just took your Copic Multiliner like I did at 0 0.3, I think, um, you could leave it without putting any of this color. Or, if you did want to match up the color, you can see how the little sweet spots show up from stamping. You could leave those light. And you could go in with a similar light touch, though. This, the way I'm coloring, it's like um, I'm pressing so hard, it's a wonder that my knuckles aren't aching because I have a hard touch when I color. For some reason it's hard for me to color in with a soft touch. I always have to remind myself, ease off Carol. <laughs> Which, this goes to show you, polychromos don't break off at all and I have a, a, you know, a real heavy touch to my coloring and they're staying true. They are not breaking off. Now I'm going in with the blue. This is kind of a purple blue and then I'm going to come back in with the rose color like the fuchsia and experiment. This was not a tutorial to say okay this is what a rose will look like you know when you're finished. I'm sure now with all the genetics and stuff they can do with a rose you could get that color. <laughs> okay Carol ease up. <laughs> yeah that just scared me. Uh, but with the polychromos they're like butter. They are, you know, I get used to my Prisma pencils and they're beautiful. I love them. I'm used to them. I love coloring. They're, they, the Prisma pencils have the wax, as we all know, and the polychromos are oil-based. But I'm going to tell you, oil or wax, they're both slippery, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, so if you're thinking, and I've watched tutorials on it before. Hello, excuse me. <laughs> That little spanky dog, he's just really in there today. Um, you think to yourself, okay, from tutorials that I watched, I was thinking they're going to be more, they're not going to have that creaminess to them because, you know, they're uh, an oil-based crayon, or pencil, excuse me. And the Prisma pencil with the wax, we're used to being able to use the Gamsol and moving it around, but wait, oh yes. I'm going to take out that Gamsol, and if you set a base with your Polychromos or Prisma, just set the base. Don't do anything. Do layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. Don't be skimpy on your layers. If you want to go back with the yellow like I did there, go on top of it. Then when you take the Gamsol and you start applying it, it breaks down into those colors. 
and it adds the beautiful sweet spot you want on your flowers beautifully. I find with experience, uh, you're not as, not that I'm all that experienced, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, as we have experience in coloring over time, and we have the, we're not afraid to make mistakes, we're not afraid to know and realize that if we don't like the color, we color over it. And I'm going to show you something. If you want to get sweet spots, if you forget those places and you've colored and colored with dark pencils and you forget to put those little sunlight kiss marks on your flowers, I'll show you what you can do there if you go over it. Now here, as I'm looking at myself coloring, I'm trying to use a lighter touch and I'm trying to make kind of like this rainbow style of uh, burst of color in this rose. I have seen them uh, with all these colors. I don't know how they do that, but they're beautiful. Now, my favorite rose, <laughs> as I tuck it away in that envelope, here's the Gamsol. Here we go. Take a wide stump, not a narrow ended stump, a wide one, and start going in where you want it to be lighter and kissed by the sun. Watch this. Uh, if I slowed it down, see how I put the veins too on that one petal where I I just did it? Now I want to have, okay, I'm going back with a thicker uh, multi-liner. There's Copic multi-liner, Faber-Castell multi-liners. There's Stadler multi-liners, uh, pens. These just go over pencils beautifully and look at now it's coming alive isn't it I'm adding a thicker end I want these little rose petals to fold over and all you do to get that is add another line that's it just add another line to the line you just did and it adds that little you know where it just dries up and folds over you get that in just by adding a line and now I'm going to a pointed stump as I'm watching it. I'm switching off and on. I would have liked to have done this slow. Here's my, uh, I'm going to put the name of my um, pencil sharpener, the electric one. They come to a nice point, but if you don't want to lose a lot of your pencil, uh, you don't lose the lead, but you know that it, uh, when you put it in a sharpener, you are going to lose a little bit than putting it into a manual one. And you always want to sharpen in the same direction, not back and forth. Just bring it toward you all the time uh, with a sharpener, like bring it toward you with uh, a non-electric manual. <laughs> That's the word, Carol. And I love to work with pointed pencils. Some people don't. They do like a dull nib. I've seen many ways to sharpen pencils on YouTube. Uh, they're out there for you to check, but I like the electric one. And uh, here I'm putting in those fine little detail lines. And to get that, you're going to have to have a pointed pencil, whether you like to sharpen it down or not. I'm, yes, would, oh, that dog's so rebellious. <laughs> but I love him. He's the cutest little thing to me. So here we go. I am zoomed right in on this. And I'm going to start playing around here with the leaf, the one leaf here. Now, remember we put that lime green. Let's set some base on here. I can come back to that flower with our polychromos at any time. It's always there. But if you need a break in your eyes or like tired of staring at all those colors all at once, uh, take a break and go on to your leaves. Now here I'm at it. Remember I stamped the brown in the leaf? So you're going to get those brown hues on there. Uh, I wish I had a pushed it up so you could see that, but we are gonna do another leaf. So yeah, don't, don't leave me yet, please. <laughs> don't go on to another tutorial yet. Yeah, stick with me. I think you'll like it as we move on. You know what's really funny as I'm looking at this for only 20 minutes? <laughs> into an hour and 28 minute tutorial. Oh yes, but, but there are so many other little bits of goodness throughout this tutorial I think you're gonna like because I'm telling you, I work days. You're probably wondering, oh Carol, you said you're gonna have these tutorials up 
I am, but some cards take more time than others, and this took me a week, believe it or not, just working and working and working, coming back and coming back, you know, and now we're going to go to the Copic Multiliner or whatever Multiliner you have, and I'm going to do the little wee uh, edges on the leaf. If you take a leaf and you look at it, they all have this crisp little, you know, elm or maple, you know, I'm in Canada, so maple leaves have that little crisp points on them. And they look more realistic. If you're going for realism, they certainly do. Now, here I'm going to go in all the corners. I had my rest. I did two little leaves there, the top and the bottom. Now I'm going to go back into all the little corners, the crevices of the petals that I drew. And I'm going to go in with the same color, well, I can't say the same color, the same color family, but darker. I'm going to go dark. And then I let it rest. I'm going to move on. I already drew out the lines with the, uh, this is the precision tip multi-liner. And the multi-liners are so that you can color with Copics. It's not going to smear. So that's why it's nice to have uh, multi-liner check and make sure it is Copic friendly friend it just won't smear right same as we do with our stamps so now I'm going to change up the hues here and I wanted to take out the more of the purple blue and go towards uh, yeah get in there I'm trying to figure out what's yeah right there in the corner I'm going to go towards the pinks and the orange as you can see here and the reds so uh, whatever color I want to be kissed by the Sun that would be the first pencil I use because when I go in there with the Gamsol a stump whatever you want to use that's your bottom layer so that's what's going to come out after you put all of the other layers on top and let me just say this polychromo factory working people the inventors of it in Germany you did your job they're the most beautiful pencils to use extremely beautiful especially for the artist that is not experienced with coloring with pencils you know I wish I could get more tutorials up with coloring I used to color more when I didn't have uh, tutorials and I was working you know you come home it's a beautiful stress relief from work and I would sit and just grab a little book and I would color. But now when I'm making tutorials, it's a different story because you want to make sure that the person watching them, you my friends, uh, don't get bored senseless and you learn something. That's why I go on YouTube to learn something, to be inspired. And uh, yeah, and, and if I like the color, this is what's awesome. If I like the color that I'm experimenting with, yeah, I'm moving them out. I need to go into the different sections of the pencil. So I'm moving that one over to my right. If you don't like the color, you get stuck on, okay, what am I going to do here to match that up to the top one? Take a break. I love taking breaks. Yes. <laughs> go make a sandwich. Um, yeah, heat up some lasagna anything and look at it I did more staring at this card than is yeah uh, I was gonna say then is legal but that doesn't sound nice does it <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so here I wanted to practice with my pen to see if the point was what I wanted so I did it on the flower below because I already had the lines there right so uh, I moved from the 0 0.01 to the 0 0.03 up to the 0 0.05 and I will explain that in just a second what the difference is for you and it's not rocket science because <laughs> the lower the number the finer the point that's as easy as that so I love the 0 1 because it's nice and fine but sometimes if you do a larger stamp and the image is larger you want to go up in size to maybe a 0 0.03 that's a nice uh, thickness. Now I'm going to change it over and show you here. I like to do those little flick motions to get the points on these leaves. And not necessarily are 
all the leaves you put down match the flower. I'm going to throw that in. You can go to other stamp sets and add different leaves. You know, I'm never going to know whether it's a uh, rose leaf or it's a uh, chrysanthemum leaf. <laughs> Although, if you are into flowers and drawing, you are going to know. So I'm going to try to be mindful of that. I'm not the only one on the face of the planet that doesn't know my flowers. I don't. I, I know what a rose looks like. I know what a daisy looks like. You know, oh, I'm trying to get myself out of that. So here we go. Grab a bunch of different colors in the green family. Now I'm going back. There's my C. I start within the center. And then we're going to move on to making the beautiful petals. And look how this one I'm going over the outside. And then I'll just add my... Uh, extra petals after I do that and you could slow this down if you want to see how I did it in slow-mo and look at that it's all together different like look to the one to the left how different it looks once you put the lines in uh, it just picks it up just a notch towards realism not in the fact it doesn't look good as three-stage stamping that is the coolest thing that stamp companies ever came out with isn't it I mean instant realism just by stamping but I like to step it up just a little bit because it gives me practice on coloring petals and that's always nice to do so here I went totally on the orange family see the difference there between obviously the purple hues I still add them and you still want to go in I was thinking actually of getting out my um, the Cutalola pen that is electric and makes all those dots. I'm going to do a tutorial on that. And yep, there it comes, my beautiful burst of roses. Just, I probably, when I was doing this, I grabbed myself a, a date square. We, oh, they were delicious. I think I'm down to two left. But anywho, yeah, so here, making sure my pencil's nice and uh, pointed at the end. I'm gonna go into the creases and I'm going to darken up the hues in the orange and it's funny I'm not an orange fan particularly of uh, coloring you'll see that I, I don't lean towards oranges and so that's why I think I was I thought I want to come out of my comfort zone and I want to do some tutorials that maybe you know it's not it doesn't make it's not comforting to do it but you have to learn it like clean and simple. I'm really given this year, 2018, I am purposing in my heart to make more clean and simple cards because I certainly love viewing them. I subscribe to a lot of channels that do more clean and simple cards than the vintage and I love it. So I'm going to try and do that. Just short little tutorials with clean and simple cards so you don't have to take the day off work to view. <laughs> One of my tutorials, right? Um, there's a subscriber friend while I'm coloring that she wrote me and said that she, uh, at work, when she has a break, she watches my tutorials. That's so cool. And it's like, um, I think that's awesome. I used to do that. When I had my lunch hour, you'd have an hour off. And uh, I would just go up in the lunchroom and watch tutorials. I mean, it's my lunch break, right? <laughs> Well, I'm going to get off of that subject and I'm going to jump back in showing you that go into all the little creases, the little pointed parts of your petals and add your darker hues. And see how I left that little yellow sweet spot in there? That will help you as well. And uh, I like to put the, you know, the irresistible pico embellisher with little drops on it to make it look like little dew in the morning on your roses when you're finished I didn't do it on this card but I love to put little dew marks you can do that with glossy accents they actually make the dew drops pen where you can uh, it's made specifically for that putting little wet marks on the card you know I can do that as I'm drawing you know I can get drooling <laughs> those aren't the watermarks I'm talking about though yeah <laughs> 
Carol, that's not funny. I know, I know. I'm just being silly. Oh, we're going to get down to some serious business here because I've got to cover that white card stock, right? And then I'll come back to the flowers. Here I'm just doing my letter C and I'm going around coloring this out and I'm thinking, what am I going to use on the background? And then it hit me. The brush -o powders and the Ken Oliver powders. That's what I'm going to use. And we are going to have so much fun doing a marble technique with those powders. Marbling is fabulous because when you use the brush -o powders and the Ken Oliver powders, you are going to find that what's more, if you have them, you'll know this to be true. Wherever you put water is the only place those powders are going to burst. The color burst, that's why they're called color burst. No water, no color. It's awesome. And there they are. Marble floor with brush -o and color burst. Let's do it. I love this technique of marbling with the color burst or the brush -os. Because if you don't put water down, the brush -o powder will just slide off after you're done applying it. So that's awesome. You're not going to get it on the flowers if there's no water there and you can release it with your water brush easily. And um, water brush is also a very affordable. That's what's nice as well. And you can control letting out the water. Now to get the marble look, you have to remember metallic the Ken Oliver uh, color bursts are—they're not the metallics are not powder; they're liquid. So if you grab that, if you have them all in the same container like I do, and you grab one of those metallic by accident, it's going to fly out there just liquid only. How do? Yes, it is. Yeah, and I always remember: no water, no color. So don't worry about where you don't put water; the color burst will not. Excuse me. Oh. See, because I yelled at him the first time there, he's just going to be, he's my little rebel dog. Yeah, he's going to walk all over it. You can get that water on your feet if you want. <laughs> Carol, you're crazy. I know, I know. Oh, you have to have some fun during the day, right? So here I'm looking at it again. I go to a more detailed brush if I want to get in the corners with the water. That way I don't release it. I'll put the water over on my sheet of paper and use it from there. I don't squeeze it out because then I may get it on the flower, but no remedy. There, there's no problem with that. Excuse me. There's always remedy. Just pick up a, I like to use a Kleenex. It seems to suck it up quicker for me. And I love the brushos and I love the color burst, but I find the brusho powders have more of that micro uh, colors in them. They're all broken up and you'll get reds with the yellow and greens and purples. Like you never know what's going to just come out of that when you squeeze the powder. And the Ken Oliver color burst, see how I got a little bit on the rose there? Yep. There's the, just what I said, the Kleenex comes out and you're fine. Now, if you put your, I just love it. That's what I'm trying to remember. <laughs> I don't have to have those hearts to know I love using this for marbling. But um, the one thing, if you want to make a marble look and you want it to bloom so you get that water look, go closer to the paper with your color burst or your brush -o. You'll get direct color like those blobs on there right there uh, that you see, the little round blobs. Then you can take your water and work them, work them out just like that. And where, like I said, you want the powder to be, add the water and it's awesome. So I'm going to go around here and I'm going to use my heat tool. If you have water on there and you want to move it to get that marble look and that bloom, push it out with your heat tool. Push the water in a different spot and you will see all the blooms I'm getting on this. And a bloom is a start to finish line. That's all it is. It all of a sudden dries with a line in it. And I, you need that for the look of marbling, right? Because it has those little lines in it. So stop what you're doing. And here I'm going to add my multi-liner so that I can see where I can go out and, you know, inside when I go to color this rose. And if I made a mistake and I added some yellow where the rose is with the water, it doesn't matter. 
because I'll just color over it. That's the beauty of the Brusho powders and the Ken Oliver powders, the color burst. So I'll go around and I'll add all my flowers so I know which uh, spaces to put the powder in the water and it's coming alive. But at the same time, I'm looking at that big round mask that's going to produce white. <laughs> as soon as I take it off, I'm going to have this white image. But wait till you see what I do in that space. I was thrilled. This card now is coming alive to me. I was panicking on what I was going to do with it only because the masks were there. And I just started having fun. I just started different techniques, trying this, trying that. That's what a technique is. It's not that I am so experienced. No, it's that I'm not afraid to try something and call it a technique. <laughs> That's what that is. Just go for it. Just go for it. And if it doesn't work out, that's what coloring is all about. Color over it. Paint over it. Add some gesso and it'll be white again. I mean, but don't throw it out, please. No, I don't throw my projects out. It's just new challenges to me. It is tempting to throw things out, you know. I, I get that, that you get frustrated with what you're doing. But if you will just set it aside and if things go askew, that's fine. It's just one more step in giving you more experience as you are learning, like I am here. I can't, I can count on one hand how many times I've used these color bursts, but yet when I sit down with them, it's challenging to see what I can do with it. Because I, you know, I've, what if I use them maybe five times and that, you know, that doesn't matter. Just keep going. Keep trudging on, and that's what I did with this card. And I'm telling you, at the end, I was so satisfied. But I tell you, on this journey here, it was, I, I kept thinking, what am I going to do in those circles? That was on my mind all the time. You shouldn't do that. Worry about those circles later, you know? And here I'm adding some more dark to get that marbling effect. And you can go back. This is what I learned with the color bursts and the brushes. You can go back and go back. And more so if you had watercolor paper, but because I'm not working on watercolor paper, I had to be careful. And I love leaving those little bursts of powder there and drying it off like that. I think it really does add to the marble, the marbling technique of the whole thing. It's wonderful. And you know what else I struggled with on this was what color to put behind there. Um, I knew blue wouldn't work. Um, behind there because, well, it wouldn't work for me. I didn't want the flowers to look like they were flying, like in the sky. So that's why I kind of tuned away from doing it blue. It's not saying it wouldn't look pretty, but to me, I wanted them to be more grounded. So I was thinking of a floor. And then when I thought of floor, I thought of marbling. How nice is that? And the best of Effects I find without having to use different marbling, you know, liquid supplies that we have to make it look like marbling. The color burst and brush o powders are the perfect solution to a background. They're wonderful. I even thought of using my Copics, like my Copic compressor, and going on it, but you know, I thought, oh no, look at all the masks <laughs> I'd have to make. That's not happening. And then I went into my stash, and there my brush o powders and my other Ken Oliver color bursts were sitting there screaming, Get me out! Look at, I'm growing a flower right beside it just to show you how pretty the greens, the light and the dark greens look. Ah, I was falling in love. And now this is what I'm telling you I'm moving it around, using a little bit of paper towel I ripped off there to get the corners. And I'm in control of this project. That's what you have to do. You're not going to control me, oh card base. <laughs> I'm in control of this, yes. And look at the green hues that came out. I'm telling you, every time you pinch that little bit of powder, you're getting new results. 
each time with little bursts of color. It's fascinating. It's fascinating for me to watch it again. And where there's no water, no color. I always remember that. Don't worry, Carol. If you didn't put water on that flower, it's not going there. Have your paper towel beside you to get the color pushed off if that's what you want to do. And once you put your multi-liner marks, it's going to just pop off the page, trust me. And the end result, you'll be so happy. And the water brushes, there's so many on the market. I like the detailed ones. I like the chunkier ones. I like the flat brushes, the round brushes. That you can get them all online. And here I'm just showing you that I put a glob of water down there that was already on my brush, the yellow. I'm pushing it into the little crevices right there. And you could leave it light because that's the beauty of marbling. You do have light uh, colors, dark colors. You have the lines of the marbling, the blooms. All comes together, my friends. Just keep at her. Don't give up. I wanted to experiment with coloring with brush oak. Uh, powders and coloring with the uh, color bursts. So I grabbed another sheet of the 140 pound cardstock that I have and I said I'm going to take one of those roses and color with the color burst. I mean it did say color burst right and here we go with the Kleenex sops it up nicely. So I thought okay let's put some I'm just showing you here turn that page over I'm going to grab the brush -o, I think. That's what I'm going to color with first right here. Put some water down. I still have that yellow on my brush. And I'm going to push out that red color. The red and the yellow. Oh, it looks like a rose petal right there. Oh, what an idea that is. I love that. Just do little blobs of water and then dry it. And you've got an instant petal. You could make a flower just like that. So, oh, just watching it, ideas are rushing to my brain. So here I put pins on the top, you know, the pearl pins uh, on my brush show, and then I painted the top so I know what color it is quickly to view it. And now I'm plopping the water down, and we are going to put the water down first, then the color, wherever I want the color. Now, I wasn't concerned here with the powders going onto the rose because I'm going to paint that whole rose with the brush out powders. And look at this. It goes right into the oranges and the red hues. Just keep pushing that powder out and experiment because all of those little micro powder chip things that are in there, look at, isn't that awesome? Take it off if you don't like it. Grab your, yeah, I'm going all over the place. I kind of like that reddish mark. So I went into, uh, yeah, there's both kinds of yellow ochre. There's the brush oak and the Ken Oliver um, color burst. Yes. And doesn't that look almost identical to the other rose? Look, using just the color burst as a palette over on my other card base. Now, having the same card base, 140 pound, here I'm going into the purple. Don't, yeah, don't panic. Just lift it up if it's too dark. See? I got that purple hue like the other flower. This was so much fun. I was having a lot of fun doing this, uh, practicing here, and that's what it is. And I kind of forgot for a second, maybe three seconds, that those round masks were there. <laughs> and it's going to be bright white when I take them off. Yeah, but I thought, no, don't even consider it, Carol. Just keep putting that beautiful brush o powder on there and keep experimenting and I can tell when it's going to pill just from my other sheet of paper. I have that 140 pound sheet and I'm working on that as well as on my good card right there with the flowers. So if my uh, practice paper starts to pill, I know to ease off and don't try putting any more water on the rose. Otherwise, I'm going to have another round hole. <laughs> that I have to come up with a plan. Same thing is going to pull through for your leaves as well. It's going to be beautiful. If you didn't like the polychromo pencils and you wanted to get, let's say, more little bursts of color, add the color bursts over top. 
This is the color burst. I'm putting it right over top. This is the stamped image. This is the distress inks. And distress inks move with water. So you're getting the best of both worlds here because underneath is going to move for you. And you're not going to have to worry that it's permanently there like you would the Prisma pencils with the wax. And uh, here I'm just coming out. Now look at how blob that looks. But take your little paper towel or Kleenex and leave on there what you want to be a permanent stay. And you're going to be one happy camper. I'm going to push this ahead a little faster for you in a second. And just show you how I finish up the... Uh, leaves I think we're just gonna do a quick a quick go at it and then we're gonna come back there's many techniques I'm using throughout this card and I sped this up believe it or not it doesn't look like it but there's my letter C it's kind of like one of those fat letter C's and uh, adding some petals going around all different proportions and fun look at that some daisies just to change it up there <laughs> So look what I did. It could be a birthday card. Yeah. Oh, peeling those masks off. Do you think I didn't go into panic mode right there? <laughs> I, my heart almost stopped. This is so funny. So there's my brushes and there's my color burst and my metallic. And oh, it's going night night. I'm putting it away because I'm going to move on. I have to get out my Xyron machines. Oh, we're going into plan B, some more techniques. I'm getting up on my chair. Let's do it. <sighs> Xyron 5-inch machine, tin foil you're going to need, little Xyron machine I'm going to use, and the honking big boy, the 12-inch create a station. Love this thing. It's so funny. I went to get my 5-inch Xyron, and I saw that sitting beside it up on a shelf, and I said, what's that? <laughs> How pathetic is that? I said, I did have that. Yeah. See, that's why out of sight, out of mind, if it's too high, I'm only five feet. I mean, anything above that, I don't know what's up there. I found my metallic tags, and that's this. Finding this gave me the idea to use tin foil on my card. And I was going to make a bag out of this card and use this. Uh, um, canvas it's sticky back canvas and I love that too but I changed my mind good thing and I went to the alcohol inks and I'm looking in my stash I haven't looked in this little container forever I wanted the circles on top and a flower die I wanted that kind of flowery looking die right there I found it isn't it amazing boy these are older dies for sure. You want to find one that will go right over top of that. We're not cutting it out. Nope, we're not cutting it out. Wait till you see what I decide to cover that space up with. White card stock. stock. Yeah, see I get nervous just looking at it. <laughs> okay, let's get going. You're going to love it. For this technique, using the tin foil, you're going to just pick out the colors that's in the background of your card stock. You're going to need a few dies. It doesn't have to be round or uh, flower shape, but because that mask was round, I used that. There's my alcohol inks. I had the Stampin' Up! refiller. You don't want that because that's water base. You want the alcohol base. I'm actually having a cup of instant coffee on that day. Whew! Yeah, you want to have brayers, any one brayer. I just picked those ones out some solution alcohol ink solution you want to have some plastic gloves these are disposable i love it and the card stock i want to use is flimsy and also my little mat so that the alcohol uh, inks don't get all over the place i keep them contained and then we're going to just cut off it doesn't matter how large it is as long as it will cover that round space there you're safe but I thought you know what who knows what else I want to do and because it's 80 pound cardstock it's flexible and it's perfect so I grabbed my 12 inch creative station now this is only I think it's 12 inches if it sits on your desk wide 
but the cutting space I think is nine inches. I love the way it just snaps in there. This was like finding a gift. Ah, oh, yeah. Grab some tin foil. It doesn't have to be thick. Whatever tin foil works, and scrunch her up just like this. I don't like to scrunch it into a ball because then I can't get it back out. Just scrunch it, bring it out. Scrunch it, bring it out like an accordion. Eh, 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 eh. Then I take uh, just your little brayer. It's nice because it flattens it out and it gives you more than you know than just having it applied there. Add sticky to the back of your card. So this is the method I'm using. I wanted to have sticky so the Xyron worked perfect. I'm going to put my tin foil over top. That's just the peel off wax paper. That works perfect too if you don't have a brayer. Just something where it'll slide and flatten it. Taking my scissors, going around there. Fun, fun, fun. If you want a technique that just lets you have fun, this is one of them. You know what else I thought would be nice? A rolling pin. You know when you go to the thrift stores, just watch for one of those baby rolling pins. Anywho, yeah, or a big heavy one that you have in your uh, kitchen. So here I'm matching the colors up to the card with the alcohol inks. And I am wanting to smush it around so I put my glove on and then I end up just tilting it here and there if you put a good portion on. And then for the leaves, I made sure that I had another, like I cut this one in half and then I put more of the green and yellow tones in it. Then I do the purple, red, yellow, orange here. And uh, yeah, it goes right into all of those little crevices and dries instantly and the funny thing is I don't know if I put this in but I actually put that uh, red in that was from the Stampin' Up! refillers which is not alcohol based it's water based so I had to pick it up with some dryer sheets and paper towel because it will just sit on top it's not going to make its way down and stay there like the alcoholics do and it's beautiful. Wait till you see that you can die cut with this. Then you have the sticky back on the back of it. So you could do die cuts. You could do a lot of things on here. Now because I'm putting it through the die cut, cutting machine, my Vagabond, I covered the top in tin foil because I don't want my um, blades here going into the alcohol ink and having to clean that up. So just put something over top. Piece of paper would have been fine. I just had the tin foil and I thought, wow, that's awesome because I'll use the top and the bottom. So when I turn this over to show you, I think you're gonna love this technique for many, many things. Uh, if you wanted to repurpose, like say a wooden jewelry box you bought at the thrift store, you just put tin foil over top and put the silver and gold. So I'm putting the sticky back on here. Look at no more white. <laughs> Gotta love it. And sticks right down there. But something else that I want to tell you is if you don't have a lot of um, the solution on a certain portion of your die cut, just get the blending alcohol blending solution like I'm using right here. Tilt it down and the colors will blend down into the silver. So I just helped it along. I took a little bit out here and there so it looked even, kind of. Like, it doesn't matter because I am going to put another piece of rounded cardstock over top. I am not putting this through the embossing folder here because what I want to do is I want to die cut a rose out and put it right over top. I just want the effect. I wanted the dimension for a reason and we'll show you that and just we will show you that. <laughs> like there's somebody here doing it with me. That's so funny. I will show you how I do that in a minute and why I did it in this manner. So I'm picking some of the color up so it's not so dark and then I'm going to peel the back off and for, oh I'm glad I pushed that up aren't you? I'm going to use glossy accents to do any of my gluing down just to have a coat on it for it to dry because I didn't want this to come up in any way. So I'm going to set that round circle over top. I'm going to grab these micro uh, bits. Now this is not micro bits. It's called, this is called uh, Ultra Fine Flower Soft in Raspberry Fizz. And it has little like uh, 
almost micro balls in there. It's very, uh, it's, oh, I, I can't describe it. it. It almost is like beads, but in a soft form. That's the best way I can share that with you. I'm going to push some of this uh, glossy accents with my finger into all the crevices. And there's a reason for that. And when you see when this dries, how gorgeous this looks, you're going to want to do it on a card ASAP. <laughs> so I sprinkled the flower soft on there. And you can hardly see it, but because it's a little heavier and it seeps down into the glossy accents, but all those little raspberry fizz colors comes out. Oh, when it dries, it looks like glass and you're looking down onto a glass flower. It's absolutely stunning. I can't say it enough. You're going to love this. And you could put beads on there, like the micro beads and let them settle down inside there. Uh, all kinds of avenues, but I was really happy to cover that white circle up with this flower. And, you know, I wasn't thrilled right off the bat with this card, I have to say that. But, see there, it's dry. It's crazy beautiful. But as I got going on this, it's I started to fall in love with it. Now, this is another piece I cut out of the tin foil because, remember, I cut that large piece in half. I'm putting more of the green, dark, dark green tones on here. So I'm going to push it up, hopefully, so you can see it. It's going to seep into the crevices, and that's going to give us our leaves. I'm just picking a little bit up with the paper towel. Once it's dry from all of the ink, like it's evaporated, and I've softened up with the paper towel, I'm going to grab a Stampin' Up! punch. We're going to punch out four nice different shaped leaves. Isn't that beautiful? Think about doing this with balloons, uh, with die cuts of balloons. How pretty that would look to match your background of a card. I think it'd be stunning. I'm going to have to do that. And uh, to get the, I just, when it's dry and you've got the sticky on the back, remember? So once it dries, just uh, slide your tweezers in there and grab the extras that are in the punch and slide it out and everything works out well. Here's the punch that I used, the Stampin' Up! punch right there. And it's wonderful to use our punches, isn't it? When you can, and I'm just testing it to make sure all the glossy accents are dry. I have this little rose stamp set in my stash, and uh, I love it because not only does it have the frame with the roses on it, but it has the separate roses. See those three there the bud, and the full bloom, and the half bloom with the leaves there. It's gorgeous. So I took a piece of the foil right there, and we are going to die cut it out of that other piece of tin foil that I have up there, and we're going to seat that right in the middle of this beautiful uh, center. And when you peel it up, remember you have that extra piece of tin foil that I put over top to protect it going through my die cutting machine. So you can use that. It has the impression on it, but I wanted it right there. It was perfect. Look at that. I just loved it. And the die cut put the impressions of the rose on it and I'm going, okay, I have to fill up that circle. <laughs> that white piece sitting there. So I have a leaf on there. But if you separate those leaves, because we have the paper first, remember we put the paper through the Xyron, See how I separated it and it leaked down onto the paper and made it brown. If you do a close-up on this, you'll see it on that lower leaf. It's a brown piece. I just separated the tin foil from the paper and it was beautiful. It gives you that extra layer. You can poof it up. Oh yeah, then I'm going, let's put a bicycle there, right? <laughs> what? what was I thinking? But you know what? When you're not thinking, you have to, oh, this is even worse. Carol. You don't want that on there. But then this thought was fabulous. Cut it there. Get that rose up and get some dimension. Where am I going to cut it? I'm thinking right there. 
yes I don't want to lose any of the coloring on the bottom but I don't mind losing the top portion where we just triple stamped and used the multi-liner. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to cut it. I'm still contemplating doing it as a bag. Look at that. I'm putting it behind there with the canvas and that's the Claudine Helmuth sticky back canvas. And I thought, no, Carol, you don't, after all of these hours of working with that, you want to make it into a card. So I did. Look at, I even got out my ovals, but I would have lost it. Uh, a lot of the flowers, so I put that away. Now before I cut anything, I make a score mark here. You want to make a score mark because if you change your mind, you can go back with the score, score mark because you can make it like you put that there on purpose. But this way I know how much to cut. I slide it into my cutter here. I love this because you have that metal line, the blade to cut alongside. And here's where I start to make the dimension. I'm going to cut that rose out, all of them actually. Wait till you see it. I was thrilled to death. And that rose slides under that leaf, that uh, tin foil leaf. It's actually leaves because it's two of them. I separated the paper from the foil. Look at, ah, oh, that's all it took. That's all it took. I, oh, every time I said it there, I was honestly ecstatic and the card base wasn't that big, right? It wasn't like seven by 15 and a half. <laughs> it wasn't that bad, but it was big. So now I need to fussy cut it out. And this is the thing. You've drawn all of the shape of the petal. So you can cut it as small or as large as you want. Just go along the lines you made. And then I took my Memento Tuxedo Black Pen and went around all the edges I didn't want, if I'm going to cover white cardstock, I don't want white cardstock showing around my rose, right? <laughs> so what I did was I put the, look at, I raised it up there. I did an actual leaf. I had another leaf that was there. So I got to raise the leaf up on there for dimension. Beautiful. I'll go around this and then I distress all around the edges, of course, of my card. The background here after I get this down I'm going to use my 3M backing tape so that I can lift it up off the page. I'm starting to get real excited about this uh, card here. I really am. It was like I didn't know what I was going to do and that's the thing. If you put look at that now if you wanted to make a moon on a scene that would be perfect to use those uh, masks. But for the style I was going for here, you have to do this, right? <laughs> so I had the double-sided tape on the back. I saved you that from showing you how I put it on, I think. Phew, yes, it's long. Another 20 minutes to go, I think. Thank you if you stuck with me all this time. And you're probably hungry by now, so you should grab something to eat. Now, once we get all of the little pieces, look at that. I was able to cut it right on the side like halfway through because I didn't have enough of the rose so you can put it on the bottom like I did right there going across the crease of the cardstock or right on the corner actually would look nice too going the opposite way now the next thing I have to decide is what do I put as a card base to set this on do I want to put it on colored cardstock so I went to my stash to see if I had something kind of in between the colors here, I had this kind of a copper orange, but I wanted to stay away from the orange, so I put that back. So now I went over to the more burgundy bliss color of my stash, but first grab my scissors. This is 140 pound cardstock, so I really have to get in there to make it vintage and uh, the distress tool would have hit those little dimensional roses that I put on so I opted to use the scissors so that was a good thing and then you want to take your black marker to go over all the edges at least I do because you know me and white cardstock oh yeah then out of my stash remember my beautiful haul these are the thanks uh, this is the thank 
thanks. Oh my, you can tell I'm getting tired, right? This is the recent Christmas order that I treated myself to over on Altenew. And I used that cardstock, the Blackberry Bliss cardstock, to make die cut the word stank, stanks. <laughs> Ah, all to new script words too. That's what this is. I'm not, yeah, I hope you don't mind. I left this in. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> if you think you're tired, try being on the other end of this. <laughs> I love it, but I tell you what, I think I need a break, right? But look at, I'm so excited about this card. I'm going to start explaining why right here. I took the Nouveau, serious here. I wanted the ghosting effect, so I put the glue on. And then I slid it over just a tad, so I have the Blackberry Bliss on the bottom. I'm going to use my 2-inch cuteness Zyron here to slide them through now, the other two. But I have to tell you, this is a reminder that to get the boogers off it, when you take it off the glue here, the thanks, you want to make sure you do it while it's on the sticky. Just slide your hand back and forth. And look at, look at that. My brayer. How handy is that? Oh, so many good things came out of this card. And then I'm going to take it off, but I should have wiped it. Like, ran my hand over it. But remedy, remedy, here it comes. Baby powder. I keep my baby powder in a little wee glass thing with holes on the top. I got it at the thrift store. I put tape over top of the holes so I could put my pins in there to keep them nice and smooth, my big long pins. And then I only make three or four holes for the powder to come out when I'm using it before I, um, you know, have a project that I need the baby powder. And here I'm just going over the baby wipes with a, I'm sorry, the thanks cardstock with the baby wipe. And that'll get the baby powder right off. And then we can move forward and I'm going to rub my hand across the thanks while it's still on the paper through the Zyron. So I had to use my pokey tool to have a little assistance for the leftover boogers on there. And uh, you don't want it all crumply when you put the next thanks up. And then once that's finished, I take there. That's the solution to getting rid of boogers, is just running your fingers across it like that. And then taking it off. And you don't have as many. You still get a few, but not so many. And then I'll put that over top. Is this font not sweet or what? I love it. And that's the Altenew, um script too. Word script too. I'm going to leave everything over on my blog. And then let's zoom in. Yes. So I have to figure out after I put the Nouveau dots all around here where I'm going to put this. Doesn't it look like it's like perfectly uh, dotted like that? So I put it right there underneath the middle rows. And of course, get out your uh, ruler, your T-square, because this will help you. I worry about the t and the S. The rest will fall into place because it's script. You don't want it all down on the bottom, right? You want it to be raised up, down, up, down, up, down. Once that gets seated, oh happy day, I'm so excited. I get the Tim Holtz platform and I move everything off. These I have a video with the homemade um, corners that I made out of a uh, geometric set I got at the dollar store. And then this is the funny thing. If you distress your cardstock before putting it in there, before I put the uh, My Favorite Things Rose background stamp on there, and you're cornering it, don't come down the second time because you will never get it even because even if you corner your cardstock, you distrust it. So it's not going to be even like a crisp straight cut. Uh, I'm talking from experience here. I had to turn it over and use the other side. Isn't that the beauty of having it? Cardstock, you can use the other side when you make boo-boos. So here we go, Blackberry Bliss. I love this Stampin' Up! ink. It's so juicy. Uh, and I've had it a while and the juice is still flowing. 
which tells me I'm not using it often enough, right? But I wanted to do tone on tone. So the Blackberry Bliss cardstock with the uh, ink on here is wonderful. And you can stamp that without the platform, of course. It'll stamp, but I wanted it to be somewhat even like a frame, right? Because that's bigger than a six by six uh, background stamp. It's larger. So I'm just working it, getting it all in there. And then after this, I did it again. And I moved the card stock a tad and it gave me double lines. But I turned it over and we're going to move forward with my homemade card base. Yes, it's so juicy. Just looking at it makes me want to quickly create another card. Now, after... I have that all ready to go. I put some Nouveau glue on the back side here. See, I used the dotted um, tape runner and I knew that was not going to hold on there, futuristically speaking. So I quickly took it off and I added Nouveau to the back. This way I know it's going to take going through the mail and I don't have to worry that because sometimes that dotted um, tape runner doesn't work so you want to make sure you check that out and look at that that's the top portion you know I do <laughs> this is a new tool it's called shirt tails you just use your shirt tails there uh, arm tails whatever <laughs> yes oh, you gotta use what works right you gotta do what you gotta do so here I want to show you something I had to make the shiny thanks. The thanks shiny. This all to new beautiful uh, die cut. I love it. And I use the irresistible Pico embellisher for this. It's runnier than the other glossy accents that we use and it dries quicker. Yet you get that shine. It's not really lifted up. You know, it just gives it that uh, little bit of added accents. And uh, so I put that on there and I took my heat tool. I made sure that was very dry before I opened that up and made another mess. I should have zoomed in on this because it looks so pretty. You have the middle flower all nice and shiny from the glossy accents. So the Pico embellisher is perfect. You can get it in clear and in sparkly and I use the clear on this and uh, Pico embellisher is got the beautiful detailed tip so you can get on all your little um, die cuts that's what I'm trying to say and uh, it looks beautiful look at that now okay it couldn't be enough right <laughs> I couldn't leave well enough alone I love my star um, I'll leave the name of that these stickers they are the ultimate if you have anything that's a uh, little wonky on your card you can straighten it up with these uh, star form that's what they are stickers I'm going to move this at an extra speed up so that you don't have to go through it with me slowly but putting these stickers on what I would do is on the corners in the middle, put a little dot, lift it up when you're finished with designing how you want it, lift up the stickers a bit, put glossy accent dot here and there, and that way they won't come off. Even though they're sticky in time like anything else, you want to have it secured. And I can't even tell you how many designs they make with this Starform stickers. They're beautiful. I get black, white, silver, gold corners. I uh, love the corners. Aren't they beautiful? In all kinds of styles. So many in one package. It's well worth it. And later on it takes me time to go through and find everything but I will do it on my blog so that you can look it up and press the link um, later on today. And uh, once I get this loaded up to YouTube. So here's the black tried to keep the pattern similar in the corner edges and what's going around it, but doesn't that add the extra wow factor? And you know I love doing all the sides of my cards, but I actually left this clear in the center. And on the top, this is, wait till you see what I did on the top there. I hope I, 
I left it in, actually. I'm looking going, Carol, I hope you left that in, but I think I did. Of course I did. I'm not going to leave that out, right? So I thought, okay, I've got to put the tiny, tiny, teeny strip along. Look at how tiny that is. Isn't that beautiful? It just looks like a little zipper. It's so cute. Even though I sped it up, look at it. It just even, and I even distressed the cardstock and it fits in there perfectly. That's how narrow these strips you can get the packages with them really narrow. So I slowed it down right here. Look, oh, I'm so happy with everything. I'm glad I put those masks on because I wouldn't have thought to do this if I didn't have the white cardstock. So pretty to me. I know I created it, but I'm really happy with it. But I have to do something up there with the roses. So I'm tapping along. Okay, that just looks not messy enough up there. <laughs> so I start adding the Pico embellisher just in all the centers. This is what's funny. And boy, this did not look right to me. Like, what's all those dots? Somebody's going to open that up and go, what on earth did Carol do right there? Why are those wet marks all over? So I thought I'm just going to, while it's wet, well, yeah, see what I do? I just go around and around and around and around. And then I started going sideways. And believe it or not, I love this messy look. It's the vintage. It's that thing that all people that like to create these styles of cards vintage, we like that. And look at it, it dried long enough before I started going back and forth. It dried in the center, so I get that raised little bud. And I got then to make it even look sweeter, I grabbed my Burt's Bees Wax. This is almond and milk hand cream. You get it at any pharmacy. And this is uh, larger than the Tim Holtz uh, jar that you, I have the jar of it. And uh, it's similar to this. It has that wax uh, feel to it, you know, that you put on your envelopes. There it is, Burt's Bees Wax. This is double the amount for half the price, which I love. Now, I have both of them. I have the Tim Holtz Glazing Cream. That's what it's called. And I also have the Burt's Bees. Now, to add a little glitter, of course the glitter, I grabbed some of uh, some glitter paste I had and it just stuck to the centers of the buds of the roses. Just a tiny bit of glitter. You don't want much as you can see. I took a paper towel to get the Burt's beeswax in there and if you don't have that, that, the almond and milk hand cream which makes your hands smell delicious and it's beautiful hand cream but it's also the same as Tim Holtz glazing uh, cream. So now I made my own base, so I'm going around it before I put the front on this card. So we're going to distress all the edges. And it worked out to be six and a quarter by seven and a half. I think that was the card base. I want to go back to the glazing medium there, the Tim Holtz collage glaze in the mat. That's what you put over to protect any type of coloring you do when you put it through the mail. This is the Tim Holtz ATG half inch gun. I know this is going to hold beautifully. How do I know? Because I have two of the quarter inch guns. <laughs> you know, one time I got it on one of the ATG guns for $5 in a bin at Michael's in the sale clearance bin. So check that out. And then I found in my stash this $1.99. It's uh, actually a tad blurry. I apologize for that, but it's going to come into frame here. And it's a stamp set that you have all kinds of sentiments on it about creating your cards. You know, this was created by, this was painted by, this was sketched by, all of the little sayings. So I grabbed this, I put my Versamark on it, and I made sure that I put some baby powder on the edge for any strays. And what I didn't catch on the strays, I used my um, my paintbrush. And I heat set it, custom made by, and then I wrote my name down there. 
and I was very pleased. I know it's a very long tutorial. I managed to get it down to 1 hour 25, just under like 25, 1 hour 25 minutes. Oh, I tried my best. So there you have it, my friends. I do hope that you were able to pick up some inspiration on this card. Don't give up hope if you're not happy with the with the outcome of your card. Don't don't throw it away. Just work on it. I have some other cards now that I'm ready to edit and I hope you will enjoy them. This was the longer of them, so I thought I would get this edited up first. And you have yourself a blessed week. Thank you for your comments love reading them and yay a total technique card tutorial today i hope you enjoyed it i enjoyed making it for you so we will see you on the next tutorial thank you for subscribing and you take care now have a blessed week